Welcome to the lecture series under the initiative of VTU, the e Sikshana program. This is Professor Uma Rao bringing you the lecture series on transmission and distribution. So, in the previous session, we saw different types of distributors, the radial, the parallel and the ring main and we discussed how the power factor of a particular load can be specified with respect to either the receiving end voltage or with respect to the bus voltage where the load is connected. So, in this session let us take up some problems and see how to draw the phasor diagram and how to solve for the various voltage drops and for currents in the distribution system. Okay. So, we will first see how to draw the phasor diagram if the power factor is expressed with respect to the receiving end voltage. So, what this means is every load the power factor like for example, here I have specified as cos phi 1, cos phi 2. So, that phi 1, phi 2 those angles are the angles of the current with respect to the receiving end voltage that is the meaning of the phrase power factor with respect to receiving end voltage clear. So, I have just taken two sections here the logic is the same even when we have more than two sections. So, let us consider three nodes x, y and z, x, y and z. So, x by looking at the direction of the current here you can see that x is the source, the source point and current I 1 is drawn by this load and the current I 2 is drawn by this load. Okay. So, R 1 and x 1 are the impedance components of the first section between x and y and R 2 and x 2 are the impedance components of the second section between y and z. So, if you apply, so let us see how we can whatever we can make out from the uh, representation and then see how to draw the phasor diagram. So, if you look at the node y and apply K C L there, you can see that I s the source current injected at node x is equal to I 1 plus I 2 and I 1 and I 2 angles are specified with respect to the receiving end voltage. We rarely specify any angle with respect to the sending end voltage because the sending end voltage is not specified. It is always the receiving end voltage that is specified. Now, as before, let us not try to memorize the phasor diagram, that is a very bad way of learning and remembering a phasor diagram. Learn how to draw it, learn how to draw it, fine. So, first let us draw the receiving end voltage. So, this is the first one. So, that is equal to V z. Receiving end means I mean the farthest from the source, that is the meaning here. Okay. So, first plot V z the receiving end voltage. Next what is it the current drawn at the receiving end itself that is I 2 at an angle of phi 2. Now, this angle phi 2 remember is with respect to the receiving end voltage. So, next draw this I 2 at an angle of phi 2 this is phi 2 right clear. So, the receiving end voltage and if there is a load connected there the current drawn by the receiving end uh, load. Next, let us consider the section y z. What is the current flowing through that? If you see it is I 2, the current flowing through section y z is I 2. So, you have the drop in section y z equal to I 2 into R 2 plus J X 2 clear. So, first let us take the drop I 2 R 2 
what do you know about the drop across a resistor? It is in phase with the current flowing through it, fine. So, the current flowing through R2 is I2 and therefore, next you draw this I2 R2 in phase with I2, I2 R2 in phase with I2 and I2 X2 leading I2 by 90 degrees because it is an inductor and in an inductor the voltage drop across it leads the current by 90 degrees. So, next I draw I2 X2 this. So, what is the sum of these two? So, the drop across Y Z plus the voltage at Z will give me V Y, the voltage at node Y. So, I have the vector sum and this is node V Y, clear? Next, what is the load at Y? It is I 1 at an angle of cos phi 1 and this phi 1 is with respect to look at the top receiving end voltage. So, first let me draw that I 1. So, V r is here. So, I 1 with respect to receiving end voltage here. This is phi 1. The voltage between V r and V r or V z in this case and I 1. Got it? Now, what is the drop in section x y? It is I 1 into z x y. So, it is I 1 R 1 plus j I 1 x 1. Now, what is the current through R 1 and x 1? Is it I 1? No. Look at that. Look at the figure. What is the current through it? The current through this is I s which is I 1 plus I 2. The current through section x y is I 1 plus I 2. So, first I have to find the sum of I 1 and I 2. So, I find this, this is the sum. Okay. So, this is I s, that is the sum of I 1 and I 2. So, the drop in R 1, the drop in R 1 is I s R 1, I s R 1 will be in phase with I s and I s x 1 which is leading I s by 90 degrees and the sum of that I get V x the sum of that I get V x. So, you see drawing the phasor diagram is very simple, drawing the phasor diagram is very simple. So, let us revisit this, what have we done here? I have two loads, two sections and this phi 1 and phi 2 both are specified with respect to V r. So, start the phasor diagram first with V r. So, plot V r and I 2 at an angle of phi 2 and I 1 at an angle of phi 1 with respect to V r plot these and find the sum of I 2 and I 1 I s. So, you have all the currents in position, all the currents in position and in section Y z the current is I 2. So, I have I 2 R 2 in phase with I 2, I 2 x 2 in quadrature, the sum of V r I 2 R 2 I 2 x 2 is V y. And the drop in section x y is I s into R 1 plus j x 1. So, I have I s R 1 in phase with I s, I s x 1 leading by 90 degrees and the sum of V y and the drop is V s. So, now you got all the parameters. You have current in all the sections. So, you can find the voltage drop at the sections. You have the voltage at different nodes. You have the voltage at z, x, y. You can calculate any angle, you can calculate all the parameters, clear, simple. Now, a more meaningful way is specifying the power factor with respect to the load voltage because when I give an equipment, when I have an equipment, I specify its power factor with respect to the voltage I apply across it, right. So, this is a better way of representing the power factor rather than referring it to a receiving end voltage which is somewhere far away. Same way let us draw the phasor diagram, the logic is the same. Okay. Again I 1, I 2 are the currents drawn and I s is equal to I 1 plus I 2, everything is the same. The only difference here is with respect to the previous case, here phi 2 
is with respect to v z and phi 1 is with respect to v y. In the previous case phi 1 was with respect to v z that is v r the receiving end voltage is equal to v z. So, here the only difference is that phi 1 is with respect to v y and not v r. Therefore, therefore you cannot fix phi 1 before you find v y. Whereas, in this previous case here even if I have some more sections and all the currents are specified with respect to the receiving end voltage, I can draw all the currents at the respective angles because they are all with respect to the receiving end voltage. But here, here I 1 is with respect to V y. So, until I position V y, I cannot plot I 1. Okay? Otherwise, the rest of the procedure for drawing the phasor diagram is the same. So, again let us start. So, I start here. I first plot V r, V z equal to V r. Next I plot I 2 at an angle of phi 2, phi 2 is the angle between V z and I 2. Next I plot I 2 r 2 in phase with I 2 and I 2 x 2 in quadrature and I get V y, the sum of all those 3. Clear? Once I position V y, the angle of I 1 is phi 1 with respect to V y. So, I have V y, this is V y and so now I plot I 1 with respect to V y. Previously, I plotted, plotted phi 1 with respect to V z, now it is with respect to V y. Then over, so I find the sum of I 2 and I 1 is I s, then I plot I s R 1, I s x 1 and I get V x. Clear? So, there is a very subtle difference between the two ways we specify the angles and as I said this is more meaningful because this directly reflects the power factor of the equipment connected at a particular bus. So, now let us take some simple problems, let us solve for that. So, you do not have to do very, very simple network theory applications of KCL and KVL is what you are doing here. So, I have a two wire feeder x y z which has a load of 10 amperes at z and 50 amperes at y both at p f point 8 lagging with respect to the receiving end voltage. The impedance of section x y is 0.03 plus point j 0 6 ohms and that of y z is 0.06 plus j 0 0.1 ohm. I want to maintain the voltage at the far end, see that is very important because that is what you have to specify that is the voltage which will be least, okay. further upstream the voltage will be higher at 400 volts. So, determine the voltage at x and y. Sometimes in these problems on uh, distribution systems, you have a lot of data, maybe many sections, here there are only two sections, you may have three sections, you may have parallel. First draw the electrical network, it will be very easy for you to solve because we are only going to solve it using basic circuit theory, right. So, what do I have? I have a feeder x, y, z x, y, z, it is actually an ideally a distributor because I am tapping loads in between, it is actually a distributor. So, I told you the word distributor and feeder has a subtle dis difference that in a feeder you do not tap in between, but in a distributor you have tappings, but the two are generally interchangeably used in uh, distribution systems, fine. So, I have a feeder x, y, z, okay. And the impedance of the section x y and y z is given to you and there are two loads one at z and one at y. So, this is 100 at an angle of 0.8 p f lag, this is 50 at 0.8 lag and both these are with respect to the receiving end voltage that is v z and I have to maintain v z at 400 volts this is what is important. 
I have to maintain it at 400 volts. Clear? That gives me the starting point. That gives me the starting point. So, let us use let us use that as the reference. So, I have the impedance of section x y, impedance of section y z is z 2. So, I will take the reference of v z as the reference phase. So, v z is 400 at an angle of 0. 400 plus j 0 that is the reference 400 at, a, at an angle of 0. Now, what is the current through y z? The current through y z is i 2 and the current through x y is here the current is i 1 plus i 2. The current here is i 1 plus i 2 ok fine. So, the current through section y z is i 2 that is 100 at an angle of 0 0.8 minus j 0 0.6 because it is 0 0.8 pf lag, 0 0.8 pf lag. So, this minus is because it is lagging. So, all these things are important you should not forget they are minor things, but they can give you absurd answers if you do not do it properly. So, I get the drop through section the current through section y z is 80 minus j 60 amperes and the current through section x y is i 1 plus i 2 that is 50 into i 1 is 50 at an angle of 0 0.8 pf lag 0 0.8 minus j 0 0.6 100 0 0.8 minus j 0 0.6. So, I get the current through section x y. So, you see here again this is we are back to the figure. So, I have the current through this section is i 2 and the current through this section is i 1 plus i 2. This is the first step in any network what you calculate is see if you can fix the currents. You can fix all the currents in this case because all the angles are with respect to the same reference that is the receiving end voltage. So, voltage drop in section y z is i 2 into z 2. So, this is i 2 z 2 convert it into polar form for multiplication and then you have in rectangular form I have here. So, this is the drop across section y z. This drop the drop across section y z. So, next I find v y. V y I can also find the drop in section x y because I have the current i 2. So, the drop in section I x y is i 1 plus i 2 into z 1. So, i 1 plus i 2 into z 1. I get this. This is the voltage drop in section x y the first there. So, the voltage at y will be v z plus the drop in y z the voltage at y will be v z plus the drop in y z. So, v z is my reference receiving end voltage. So, that is 400 plus j 0 and this is the drop in y z. So, this is the voltage at point y. So, in phase of form polar form this is it. So, it is 410.76 at an angle of 0 0.609 with respect to v r because we all these phases is with respect to v r. Similarly, voltage at the supply end x is v y plus the drop in x y. So, I have v y. Now, do not use do not operate in magnitudes to add you always have to take the complex addition they are all phasor additions they are all phasor additions. So, this is v y and this is the drop in section x y. 
So, I get the sending end voltage is this 418.87 at angle of 1.147 degrees. Okay. So, what will be the sending end power factor? So, you see this is V r reference, this is V s that is at an angle of 1.147, it is a very exaggerated angle just to show you I am drawing this is. So, do not take the do not take the cos of 1.147 that is not the receiving end power factor right. The receiving end power factor is the cause of the angle between receiving end current and receiving end voltage. So, the receiving end current I s So, see here what is I s? I s is I 1 plus I 2, I s is I 1 plus I 2 that is 150 at an angle of minus. So, this is okay, minus because it is lagging. So, the angle between the sending end voltage and the sending end current is 36.86 plus 1.147. So, that is the sending end power factor clear. So, these are small things likely to you know where you can make a mistake. Now, this is a slightly uh, longer line a single phase AC distributor it could be a single phase or it could simply be a single phase equivalent of a three phase system balanced three phase system just like how we did in the transmission line on the distribution side also you can use the three phase single phase equivalent of the three phase system. A single phase AC distributor 300 meters long has a total impedance of 0 0.04 plus J 0 0.08 ohms total. It is fed from one end at 200 volts. So, I have just shown it as A B C D okay. and it is loaded as under. So, you see now the specification in this problem is different from what we did in the previous numerical. So, 60 amps at UPF 150 meters from the feeding point. So, feeding point let us take it as A. So, this voltage of A is 200, it is fed from one end at 200 volts, okay, 200 volts. So, at 150 meters from the feeding end, I have a current 60 amperes UPF, then 200 meters from feeding end that means, this is already 150. So, 50 meters from B. I have 120 amperes at 0.8 pf lag and at the receiving end I have 60 amperes at 0.6 pf lag. Determine voltage at the far end of the distributor. Determine the voltage at the far end of the distributor this is the problem. Okay. So, you are given the total impedance just see in the data you are given the total impedance is 0.04 plus point j point 0 0.08 ohms. This is over 300 meters this is over 300 meters. So, since it is a linear circuit we can find the impedance at 150 meters for 50 meters and 100 meters. So, as a first step let us find the impedance of section A B B C and C D A B B C and C D. Okay. So, impedance of section A B. So, this is the total impedance and it is for 300 meters. So, I need to calculate for 150 meters. So, into 150 by 300. Okay. So, this is the impedance of section A B. 
Now, if we come to section BC, it is 50 meters. So, it is the total impedance multiplied by 50 by 300. So, this is the impedance of section BC. The last section is 100 meters. So, multiply the total impedance by 100 by 300. So, as a first step, I have calculated the impedances of all the three sections. Now, power factors are mentioned. So, let us assume that all the power factors are with respect to the far end voltage, with respect to the receiving end voltage. I have to assume something, right. So, I am assuming that it is with respect to the receiving end voltage. So, in that case, all the angles, the PF specified, PF angle specified is with respect to the receiving end voltage. So, the reference is the same for all the currents. So, I 1 is 60 UPF. So, 1 minus J 0 since it is at unity power factor and I 2 is at 0 0.8 lag. So, it is 0 0.8 minus J 0 0.6 cos phi minus J sin phi. And I 3 is at 0 0.6 power factor. So, it is 0 0.6 minus J 0 0.8. So, you get all the three currents with respect to the reference voltage. What is the reference voltage? V d, I will take it to be V plus J 0. I do not know what is V, right? Because I only have the sending end voltage, I do not have the receiving end voltage. Sending end voltage is specified to be 200. So, receiving end voltage, I will assume it to be some value V. Now, what is the total drop in the distributor? So, if you go back to the figure, if you go back to the network, right. So, here what is the current which flows here? It is I 3 and the current which flows in this section is I 2 plus I 3 and the current which flows in this section is I 1 plus I 2 plus I 3, right. So, the drop would be I 1 into Z C D that is Z 3 plus I 2 plus I 3 into Z 2 plus I 1 plus I 2 plus I 3 into Z 1. So, that is what we have done. So, I 1 plus I 2 plus I 3 into Z 1, I 2 plus I 3 into Z 2, I 3 into Z 3. All these are only substitutions. You can check out the answer, do it carefully because you have a lot of multiplications and additions of complex numbers. And I get the total voltage drop to be 12.82 at an angle of 27.07 degrees. So, that is the total voltage drop in the distributor. Clear? Now, what is remaining? I should find the receiving end voltage. So, what will be the voltage at sending end? What will be the magnitude? Voltage at far end that is at the receiving end plus voltage drop in distributor and what was the voltage at the receiving end? It is V, V d and this is V plus J 0. And this term is the drop in the line, this is the drop in the distributor, right. So, here the imaginary part is 0. Therefore, I add the real parts. So, I get V d plus 11.416 that is the total real part and the imaginary part is J 5.835. So, the magnitude of that will be, this magnitude will be V d plus 11.416 square plus 5.83 square. So, you will get a quadratic equation in V d. So, whenever in such cases you are solving and you get in the quadratic equation, by common sense you should know what is the correct answer. So, in quadratic equation you will get two solutions. So, the solution you know that sending end voltage is 200. 
right the drop is approximately around 12 volts in magnitude so something close to 180 88 so out of the two answers you get for the quadratic equation the correct answer would be vd is equal to 188.49 choose that answer clear so you see what is what happens if the line is longer the consumers at the far end will get lesser and lesser voltage so supposing you try to increase the sending end voltage so that the last consumer gets correct voltage 200 volts the ones closer to the source will get higher voltages so you have a problem either way now let's take one more problem the loading on a distributor is as shown so you see here the word distributor is used in the previous problem feeder was used though that was also a distributor because we had tappings okay so anyway if you know what is a feeder and distributor the nomenclature it's fine though sometimes it's uh, used feeder is used for distributor also so the distributor is a two core cable so the resistance and reactance are 0.35 and 0.185 ohms for 1200 meters of the cable run what should be the voltage at point a sending end voltage to maintain 420 volts at d so now the receiving end voltage is specified so this is Four twenty. I want to maintain four twenty, and I have loads stacked at different points, and all the power factor angles are with respect to the voltage at D. The angles are with respect to voltage at point D. We will solve exactly as before. Everything in the problem is the same, except that here. The receiving end voltage is specified and in the previous case the sending end voltage was specified. So the impedance of the cable is given to be for 1200 meters and you have different sections. So the first section is 80, so into 80 by 1200 will give you the impedance of the first section and the second section is 100 meters. So, into 100 by 1200 will give you the impedance of the second section and impedance of the third section also. You see here both are 100 meters. So, the impedance of the third section is same as the second section. So, I have calculated all the three impedances. I have calculated all the three impedances. Now, I1 is 40 at point 8 PF lag and all are with respect to VD, so you do not have any issue here. And I2, you can see here, I2 is 10 amperes at point 5 PF lag. So, I2 is 10 at point 5 PF lag, so cos phi is point 5, sin phi will be 0.866 and I3 is 30 amperes at UPF. So, the voltage at D I take as reference I want it to be at 420 volts, the voltage at D I want it to be 420 volts. Now, the voltage at C yeah. So, this is yeah, the voltage at C would be the voltage at D plus the drop here. And the current through this you can see is I3 and the voltage at B would be Vc plus the drop here and the current through this section would be 
I 2 plus I 3 and the sending end voltage is V B plus the drop here and the current here would be I 1 plus I 2 plus I 3. So, for every preceding section you add the voltage and the drop and you move forward upward. So, I have taken V D as the reference. So, V C is V D plus I 3 Z 3, V D I 3 Z 3. So, I get V C is this. 420.831 plus J 0.415 volts is V C. Next, V B is V C plus I 2 plus I 3 into Z 2. This is the current flowing in the second section, middle section. So, I get V B, I do all the calculations, I get V B is this. So, I request all of you to do the calculations because if you do not do it, then you will not know how to solve it in your exam. Okay? So, it is important that though I have shown the calculations, you do it for yourself. And complex numbers, mind you, though you have it in the calculator, sometimes you have to juggle a little bit, convert from rectangular to polar, polar to rectangular and so on if you have to do it. So, be careful. Then finally, V A is V B plus I 1 I 2 I, I 1 plus I 2 plus I 3 into Z 1. So, this is the current in the first section. So, this is what I get V A. For 23.77. So, this is the sending end voltage. This is the sending end voltage. So, if I maintain the sending end voltage at 423 volts, the receiving end farthest section voltage will be 400 volts. Now, again remember this is the power factor angle with respect to V r, this is the angle with respect to V r. So, the sending end power factor I have to get the angle of I 1 plus I 2 plus I 3. Okay. So, we need I 1 plus I 2 plus I 3. So, if you find that sum, then that will give you the phase angle between the sending end voltage and current and you can get the sending end power factor. Clear? Now, these are all radial systems, all radial one line and tappings in between there. So, you saw a perfect example of a radial system. Now, what I have shown here in the figure is a ring loop, there is a loop. So, in a ring system you have an entry point. So, just kindly look at the figure. So, here this is the entry point and there are two loads connected at B and C. Two loads are connected at B and C and all these are the impedances, so many ohms. So, here it is 100 amps at 0.8 p f lag and 50 amps at 0.6 p f lag. This is a typical ring ring main system okay, where you have a closed loop and there is only one source, there is only one source. So, how do you solve for this from a network point of view? So, if you just see here, you know what I will do is I will take the equivalent Thevenin's equivalent at B C. So, what do you do whenever you have to get the Thevenin's equivalent at any two terminals? You remove the connection at those two terminals and find the open circuit voltage, right? 
I need to find the open circuit voltage. My idea is I want to find the current in the branch BC. That is the idea. If I know that, then I, I know at B, I know at C. So, I can find out what are the other currents. So, I open BC and I need the open circuit voltage between B and C. Clear? How would you do it? How would you do it? Now, you see the current in section AB and the current in section AC. Current in section AB is 50 amperes 0.6 PF and current in section AC is 100 amperes 0.8 PF. So, 50 at 0 0.6 and 100 at 0 0.8 PF. So, what is the voltage drop in section AB it will be IAB into ZAB. IAB into ZAB. So, this is the drop in this section. Section AB, I know the voltage drop. So, obviously, current has to flow like this. So, this will be the direction of the drop. Similarly, in section AC, this will be the direction of the drop. Okay. Next, the voltage drop in section AC is VAC is IAC into ZAC. So, once I know VAB and VAC, I can find out the potential difference VBC is VAC minus VAB. So, here I am assuming that both the currents are with respect to the same reference, some reference, common reference. If they are with respect to different references, then you cannot write the equation. So, we assume that I 1 and I 2, that 0 0.8 pf, 0 0.6 pf, those angles are with respect to some common reference. So, I got the difference between B and C. So, you see here, what did I get? I got this voltage. So, this is nothing but my Thevenin's voltage, Vth or Eth, however you want to specify. Okay. So, that is my Thevenin's impedance. Now, what is the Thevenin's sorry Thevenin's voltage? What is the Thevenin's impedance? So, for applying Thevenin's theorem, I need the Thevenin's voltage, I have got open circuit voltage and Thevenin's impedance is the equivalent impedance at the two points. So, what is the equivalent impedance between these two points? once this is open circuited, it would be the sum of these two, the sum of these two. Therefore, it is the sum, I get 3.4 by J4.4. So, what will be the current through BC? So, now how do you write the Thevenin's equivalent circuit? I think, I hope you remember. So, I have Vth or Eth and this is Zth and this is Bc line, the line Bc. So, the current through Bc would be Eth divided by Zth plus Zbc. So, I get the current through that. I get the current through that. Okay. Now, simple. So, you see here, what, what happened? I got the current through this or let us go back to the original. Yeah, I got, I calculated this current. I calculated this current. Okay. Using Thevenin's theorem, I calculated that current. Fine. So, now at this node, I know this current. So, this is the current entering, that is the current entering. So, this current should be the sum of these two currents, right. So, this is let us say I B C and whatever is this current. So, I A B will be sum of I B C plus this. 
Now, if you come to this node, this current is entering, this current is entering, therefore, this current will be this minus I B C. Simple KCL at node B and node C, that is all you can get the currents. So, you see here. So, the current I A B will be I B plus I B C that is whatever is the current drawn at B and similarly current in section I A C is I 2 minus I B C or I C minus I B C and I get the current in all the three branches. So, that was the whole idea you once you know all the three currents you can find out V A, V B anything you want you can find out. If any voltage is specified you can find out here no voltages are specified the currents are specified. So, you can solve for the currents in all the branches. Okay. Now, another similar problem a 2 wire distributor 1200 meter long is loaded as shown B is the midpoint. This is the midpoint. So, this will be 600. So, this is 60 at point 0.9 pf lag and this is 100 at point 0.9 pf lag. The impedance of A B and B C both is 0 0.15 plus J 0.2 ohms. Calculate the sending end voltage current and power factor if the voltage at point C is 220 volts. The power factors at the two load points refer to the voltage at C. Again the angles, the PF angles given are with respect to the receiving end voltage. So, let us take the receiving end voltage that is VC as the reference. It is mentioned that it has to be at 220 volts. So, VC is 220 at an angle of 0 degrees. Z A B, Z B C both are 0.15 plus J 0.2. So, that is 0.25 at an angle of 53.13 degrees. The load current at point C is 100 at point 8 P F and in section B C that is in section B C. So, in B C it will be this current. Okay. And here it will be the sum of these two currents in A B. So, the load current I B C is 80 minus J 60. Now, at point B let us say it is I 1 is 60 at point 0.9 P F, 60 at point 0.9 P F. So, I A B is I 1 plus I 2, I 1 plus I 2. So, this is the current in section A B. you get the current in section A B. So, the voltage drop in section B C is given by I B C into Z B C, I B C into Z B C. So, Z B C is sorry this is 0 0.15, 0 0.15 and you get the voltage drop in B C, you get the voltage drop in A B. So, the total sending end voltage will be V C plus V A B plus V B C 278.32. That is what we wanted the sending end voltage. So, to keep the receiving end voltage at 220 volts, I have the sending end voltage is 278.32 volts and this angle mind you 4.92 is with respect to receiving end voltage, it is with respect to receiving end voltage. So, angle between I A B and V A so, I A B is at an angle of 32 minus 32.73 with respect to receiving end voltage 
and V A is at 4.92 with respect to receiving end voltage. So, I get totally the angle between the sending end voltage and the sending end current is 37.65 degrees minus. What do you understand from that? At the sending end, the sending end current lags the sending end voltage by 37.65 degrees that is the implication of the minus sign. So, the power factor at the sending end is minus 37.65 degree cos, it is lag. Okay. So, in all these problems what you see is a simple application only of KCL and drops that is all. The thing to solve it correctly is you draw the network diagram properly and then see how the angles are specified between the voltages and currents. And in almost all the examples we considered the angles are with respect to the receiving end voltage, the end voltage at the farthest end. And then simply write the KCL and the equate the drops with the voltages and you will be able to calculate any voltage and current in the distributor system. So, in the next session we will take up from here and solve some more problems. Thank you.